good afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you're getting this from, I don't know, and welcome back. Uh, if you remember the last time we were here, uh, we had a uh, binary uh, dummy program that we were hooking in a DLL with this program and then calling a function within that program that wrote a string. Now I've made some modifications to the code and I've, uh, like I said I would, and I have went ahead and actually commented that stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't comment a lot of the code before. It was probably because I was doing a video on it, but obviously not everyone's going to want to watch the whole video just to know what one line of code does. And it's just good practice. Generally, as you know, like in this one, I always comment line by line. Um, but for some reason, I did not. Um, now, you can see a few things different about, uh, so this here is our program, and you see a few things different right off the bat. Um, we have this args buff that's initialized to zero, uh, as well as this ret buff that is initialized with zeros. Now, if we scroll down the rest of it's about the same until we get to here and we see uh, that we have a string here oh wait that's from the old one we don't need that anymore let's just go ahead and get rid of that um, yeah we don't we don't need any of this anymore there we go so I want to send a message to write to args buff which is this uh, D word here um, the address of the DLL's argument buffer so we're going to post a message to the DLL window with the message 1101, the W param of our process ID, because it's easier for us to get it for, than for our DLL to get it. It's extra work. And then the uh, address of args buffer. And that's it. Well, maybe. Then we are going to wait, because who knows, memory could take a while to, uh, you know, Right, you never know. We're going to wait for 100 milliseconds, 20 times, a total of 2 seconds, or until the args buffer changes, at which point it will output the new one. So let's look at our DLL. Now, I know that some of this doesn't have uh, comments. Uh, I'll go back through and add comments a little bit later. But if we look at the top here, we see ret buff address, args buff, and that's about all that's changed up there. But we see this functions write args buff to dword pid dword args buff pointer. All right, so we need a dword to store the address that we want to write. So let's make one, call it args buff address, and set it equal to our passed in, or no, to, to the address of our args buff right here, our argument buffer, we'll call it, which is just a, a 512 long byte buffer, whatever, chunk of memory. So if we want to write memory, we obviously need a handle to the process, so let's make one, home handle. Open the process with all access. We don't care about inheritance. And the PID. Uh, well, we made it pass it to us. We don't have to find it. And hopefully that works because we didn't check to see if it did or not. And then we are going to write the address to args buff. That's worded a little funny. Uh, address of args buff to give an address of host process. If that makes any sense at all. because this shouldn't even say host process. Host process is the one that we're injected into of um, our process, we'll call it for now. So we want to write in the memory of that process that we just got a handle to, the args buff pointer, which uh, it passed to us, the location of their, uh, their pointer to that argument buffer. And we want to write in what's stored in this D word, which is our address to arch buff, four bytes, and we don't care about an output of how many bytes were written. 
All right, so let's see the call to this. And if we remember, it's a message z 1101 in hex, obviously. And it just calls that with the D word W param, the D word L param. Very simple, because if we look back here, we see that we send it W param PID L param args buffer. So that's pretty simple, cut and dry. Give us an address to one of your locations so that we can use it later. And then let's go back into here. So we waited, and then we post a message again, 1102, with the location of our return buffer. Okay, good. So if we want to return some stuff, we have a buffer set up for it. And if we check that out, we see that all it does is set ret buff, which is that D word right here, equal to what it got. Very simple. Now, if we call output, we're, we want to still be able to output something that it sent to us, but now we want to do it from our buffer. So we just cast the buffer as a character pointer, and whatever's written in the top of it, we're going to assume is a string if we're calling this function. It works. So we see my string, this is the string I want to output, blah, 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 blah. Write process memory. We want to write it into the args buffer, which we now have the location for. My string and the length of it. Then we're just going to post the message 1111. We don't have to pass it anything in wparam or lparam because, well, we just put it in its memory. Okay, so that makes sense. Now if we run dummy, we see the same thing we've always seen. And if we run blank, we see arch buffer 71217130. And we see we are in, this is a string I want to output. Well, that worked just fine. Pressing the key, closes, and close this guy. And we're back into here. Well, this would require us to, every time we write so obviously these need to be broken down into functions, which later they would be. But for now, we're just testing to make sure that things work. Now, this requires us to write basically one, one thing, that's it, and know exactly what it is. So here we're writing a string to the argument buffer, which this obviously is going to be null terminated, so we don't have to worry about that. And then in here, it also requires us to know exactly what the argument is, and we only have room for one. Yeah, you could use it, but instead what we're going to end up doing is making a structure. And within that structure, we are going to use these 512 bytes to say, you know, we'll probably make a simple structure that's like string one, string two, string three, int one, int two, int three. You know, just various little uh, data types within it that we can pass. And then within our, our, our messages here, we can do something like argbuff dot string one and it will know where that's at and how big it's supposed to be and that could get a little complicated because we're gonna have to uh, say have a maximum string length well that's why we have 512 bytes and we can always make it bigger if we need to because ints and uh, and you know, anything else that you want to pass is gonna be rather small uh, strings, if you want to pass a string, obviously is going to be the biggest thing. Um, and if we need more room, we can always make more room. This is kind of how a uh, named pipe works, but I like this a little better. Uh, I don't know why. I just always have. Now, that currently is not set up, and we're going to set that up in the next video. Um, I could have probably squeezed it into this one, but we're going to go ahead and wait is really all that it is. Thought we could do something like that really quick, I guess, but nah, we're not going to. We'll do it in the next video.
because I'm, I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter instead of a half an hour to give you 10 minutes worth of content. And so this seems like kind of a waste. We're just posting a message. We're not using WPRAM or LPRAM. Well, we could use that to pass the number of bytes that the string is or you know other various informations. Um, and then obviously, like I said, we would use a function uh, that would do the write process and the post message and it would take in what it yeah that's about probably about all it would do um, you would pass it you just make little functions for each one uh, there's a few ways you could do it that would just call this with an argument and then do this with the argument of which one you want to send um, yeah, so I hope that you're getting a kind of an idea of how this works. And in the next video, we'll have the structure, and we will uh, also be returning uh, data to our uh, our program. And we will be looking at how to uh, wait for that information to come back uh, without actually uh, being too inefficient. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that you uh, learned a little bit, and I will toss this in the drop box with the updated code. Uh, it's kind of getting a little messy, uh, just because when this compiles it names it blank instead of our program, so I'm actually at this point just going to delete our program because it, it is, it's meaningless. Uh, just remember that ours is called blank. Um, everything else seems to be named just fine. I, I could update that in the project information, which I probably should do, but I'm just not going to right now. Uh, maybe later. I don't know. Probably not. Don't care. Um, yeah. So you'll be able to download that, play with this, see what's going on. And go ahead and actually try um, to build that structure that would take in those uh, values and see what you can do um, see if you it's actually pretty simple um, yeah see if you can add that structure in uh, handle the writing of it the way that you would need to uh, which is simple also and then the actual usage of it here and I would also go as far as to challenge you to um, add the uh, other function the changing of a value of a variable via a pointer, if that makes sense. Uh, what it does, it takes a pointer to a variable and modifies its uh, contents with the second argument passed to it. Um, the address isn't here. Uh, we did find the address in a previous video, and in the next video we will have that, we'll have the struct, and we will be writing, return, writing and processing return data. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, good luck with all that, and if you find anything, let me know, or, uh, yeah, peace.